How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody doing well? My name is Pastor Roy Edwards. I'm the district secretary for the Arizona Pentecostal Church of God, and I want to count it an honor tonight to be here with you. Could we just open up with a word of prayer, and let's just keep going. Can we do that? Raise your hands with me. Would you, Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we give you honor, we give you praise, God, in this house. This is your house. These are your people. And we ask you, God, in Jesus' name, to fall in this place. Holy Spirit, walk up and down the aisles and have your way. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we loose you in Jesus' name to do as you choose. We love you, we bless you. God, let our worship tonight be a sweet-smelling aroma that would rise to your nostrils and would be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we are... We are thirsty. We are thirsty. Just as the deer pants after the water brook, so does my soul thirst after you. So God, receive our worship. Receive our praise, God. And we'll be quick to give you honor. We'll be quick, God, to give you praise. In Jesus' name, and somebody said amen. Come on, worship team. Let us have it. Well, I went to the enemy camp. And I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. When I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. 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 Satan is under my feet. When I went to the enemy camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy camp, and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet, 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 well Satan is under my feet, can you believe now, can you believe what the Lord has done in me? 
Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Well, he saved me, cleansed me, turned my life around Set my feet up on the solid ground Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Can you believe what the Lord has done in me?
working on the outside. Whoa, what a change in my life. There's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Whoa, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Holy Ghost on the inside, He's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Oh, what a change in my life With God's Word on the inside He's working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life God's Word is on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life God's word is on the inside He's working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Oh, what a change in my life Cause there's something on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Working on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life! Well, there's something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life! Oh, what a change in my life! Oh, it's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life It's Jesus on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Jesus on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Oh, what a change in my life The Holy Ghost He's working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Holy Ghost on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Holy Ghost on the inside Working on the outside Oh, what a change in my life Oh, what a change in my life it's God's word on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life! God's word is on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life! God's word is on the inside, it's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life! Jesus is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, Jesus is the reason why I sing. Why I sing. Well, Jesus is the reason why I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, if you only knew what I've been through, you would understand the reason why I sing. I was bound up in sin, but Jesus came in and gave me peace with Him. Well, Jesus is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. 
This is the reason why I sing. Oh, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, now Jesus is the reason why I sing. Why I sing. Well, Jesus is the reason why I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I got a mind to keep holding on and I can't stop now. Well, I got a mind to keep holding on and I can't stop now. Well, I got a mind to keep holding on and I can't stop now. I've got to see my Lord somehow. Somehow, somehow. Oh, I've got to see my Lord somehow. Somehow, somehow, somehow. Well, I've got to see my Lord somehow. Could you lift your hands one more time? Come on. Father, we love you. Come on, tell him tonight. Would you in your own way, in your own words, Father, we love you tonight. Father, we worship you tonight. Just like that song says, we want to see you. We want to see your face. We want to experience your glory, God, in a way that we never have before. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. Father, we give you the honor that's due you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. No need for a rock to cry out for us tonight. We'll do it all by ourselves. We'll lift our voice. We'll worship you. We will glorify you because you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. Come on, tell him that he's good. Come on, tell him. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. And your mercy endures forever you're good you're good you're good oh father you're good you've been so good to us you have brought us through we've come this far we know you'll carry us the rest of the way oh you've brought us too far now to turn back on us now Oh, when I think about your goodness. Ah, when I think about your goodness. Yes, hallelujah.
uh, when I think about your goodness. Oh, when I think about your goodness. My God, my God, my God, my God, my prophet, my priest, my soon coming king. Oh, my prophet, my priest, my soon coming king. My prophet. Oh, my king. My savior. The lifter of my head. My refuge, I can run into it and be safe. You took me from the miry clay and you set me on a rock that was higher than I. Oh, my father. My father. My father, my father. Maybe it don't mean much to you tonight, but I didn't have a dad. And so when I can say, oh, my father. Oh, there's a special meaning to me when you haven't had something and then you gain something. It, it changes all. It changes the word. It changes the atmosphere. It changes things. It changes my lineage. It changes my purpose. It changes my destiny. It changes my vision. It refocuses me because I've got a father. Oh, my father. Hallowed be your name. I love you. I worship you. I bless you, God, tonight in Jesus' holy name. There's something about that name. Jesus. <laughs> Devils tremble at that name, Jesus. Angels are dispatched at that name, Jesus. There's something about that name, Jesus. Oh, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And somebody said, Amen. High five, somebody. Well, maybe not. It's social distancing. <laughs> How about, look at them, how's that? You can be seated if you can. I'm just so used to telling everybody to high five each other or shake hands and I keep forgetting that we're still in this situation. How's everybody tonight? Doing well? I've enjoyed the worship tonight. I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it. I don't get to hear this kind of music all the time and I get to enjoy it every now and then. Well, I've been tasked with the, with the assignment tonight to take the offering. Wouldn't it be nice just to meet all of our bills and all of our budgets this weekend right now so it's just done and over with? Wouldn't that be nice? If my ushers would come. Bless you as you get ready to give. We'll take your children if they don't eat much. take cash, we'll take card, we'll take small children if they work hard. Probably not. We got one. Hey, we got one. Can I get two? Yeah. Father, tonight as we take this offering for our district convention night one, we ask you, God, to bless it. 
and further it so that more people might come to know Jesus. God, in our district, in our churches, in our state. God, bless this offering and, and Lord, bless everyone who gives tonight in Jesus' holy name. Somebody said amen. amen. Bless you tonight as you give. Well, he's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. Well, he's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. Job said that he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Well, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, he's an on-time God, yes he is, oh, he's an on-time God, yes he is, Job said that he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time, and he's an on-time God, yes he is. Well, you can ask the children of Israel Trapped at the Red Sea Oh, by that mean old Pharaoh And his mighty army They had water all around them And Pharaoh at their back Then from out of nowhere My God stepped in And put a highway just like that Let me tell you, he's an old time God, yes he is. Oh, he's an old time God, yes he is. Well, Job said that he may not come when you want him. He will be there right on time. Well, he's an old time God, yes he is. Well, you can ask the five thousand. Hungry souls he fed on the banks of that river with two fish and five loaves of bread. Well, what a miracle he performed for the multitude. Oh, and what he did way back then will do the same for me and you. Let me tell you, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Old time God, yes he is. Job said that he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an old time God, yes he is. How many know he's an on-time God? Yes, yes, he is. I don't know what you come expecting tonight, but I come hungry for a move of God. The Lord woke me up at 6 o'clock this morning, and we, I began to pray and read the Word, and I knew God has something in store tonight in a special way. I hope you come hungry. I hope you, I hope you come tonight uh, 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 ready to be filled up with the glory and the anointing of the Lord. The anointing is in the house tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's this kind of anointing that will break the yokes. It's this kind of anointing that will set your family free. It's this kind of anointing uh, that, that, that will cause every problem that you're facing to be pulled down of the stronghold broken. Can you say amen in the name of Jesus? God is so good. I'm excited and thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we did have several pastors that called, and uh, we need you to pray for some of them. Brother Alan Pachano uh, is running a fever and sick and was planning to be here, could not come. And uh, 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 Pastor Bruce uh, Grimmett, uh, his church is represented here tonight, but they'll be here tomorrow. And uh, look, and, and uh, Brother uh, Malone needs you our touch, uh, the touch of God tonight. Uh, he fell a few weeks ago, ended up in the hospital, is still in a, uh, 
a facility, uh, getting charged up, and he called me yesterday. He said, I hope I get to be there. They let me out of here so I can be here. So pray for them that God will touch them. Amen. I'm ready for a touch of God tonight in this house. Uh, we say thank you to Sister Elliot and Victory Tabernacle for allowing us to have the convention here. Amen. Give them a hand of appreciation. Thank you, Sister Elliot. We love, we love you, and thank you for opening your doors. And it's so good to have our ministers here and pastors and a congregation that came tonight to give God honor. Some of them are gearing up tomorrow night to bring van loads. So uh, you might want to come early uh, to get a seat. Boy, that's kind of quiet, Pastor. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to have a time in the Lord uh, this week. We know we're going to be taking care of some business, but uh, we, we come tonight to let God have his way in this house. Good to see my bishop here, Brother Carmen, Sister Carmen. God bless you. We love you tonight. 36 years as our bishop, and we, we love you and appreciate you tonight for being in the house of God. Immediately after the service in the back, I've asked Brother Leonard Grammer uh, to uh, meet at the table there, and we'll be sharing just a, a little bit of what we have about Christians United for Israel. Uh, the Israel Pledge simply says, I believe that the Jewish people have a right to live in their ancient land of Israel. And that the modern state of Israel is the fulfillment of historic right. I maintain that there is no excuse for acts of terrorism against Israel. And that Israel has the same right as every other nation to defend their citizens for such violent attacks. I pledge to stand with our brothers and sisters in Israel and speak out on their behalf whenever and wherever necessary until the attacks stop and they are finally living in peace and security with their neighbor. How many know we just had a, a peace treaty signed uh, and, uh, a, and in the city of Jerusalem, uh, uh, Brother Leonard Grammer and I, in last September, got to go to Israel and we stood in front of the embassy there. And I want to tell you, God is setting up the last day move of God. The end times are near us. And if we don't know that, read your Bible again. Because uh, exciting things are happening. And I'm grateful. So he'll be handing out some uh, little pins and uh, uh, lapel pins and some pins. And uh, we, we have some uh, pledge cards for you to fill out. We would appreciate that if you would love to be a part of Christians United for Israel. Now over 9 million members. Pastor John Hagee uh, is our director, and I shared with a few of you when I was preaching for Sister Elliot last year, I had the honor of being appointed as the Cong Congressional Liaison for the state of Arizona, as well as the state director for Christians United for Israel, and what an honor. I count it an honor to serve, and uh, we were able to go to Pastor John Hagee's church uh, last year. We were supposed to go to Washington, D.C., uh, in uh, June, but was canceled because of the COVID. So we're gearing up for next year. Uh, how many know God has a lot of good things for his church? And I want to be a part of those good things. Give God some glory in the house tonight. Amen. I'd like for all of our pastors to stand real quick, if you would, tonight. Uh, all right. And uh, if you're a minister in the Pentecostal Church of God, stand with our pastors tonight. Amen. Uh, we have... Uh, Let's give all of our pastors a hand of appreciation, first of all. Thank you. And, and stay, stay uh, standing for just a moment. Um, uh, we have some new uh, uh, folks that have uh, just become pastors. And uh, I wanted to recognize, uh, real quick, uh, Brother Spencer, uh, uh, back here down at Benson. Let's give them a hand tonight. Pastor Gabe Knight out of Rainbow Valley. Pastor Michael Martin out in Buckeye. Praise the Lord. New pastors, Brother Bruce Horner, our new pastor out at Eagle's Wings. Let's give them a hand tonight. Um, and we have uh, uh, two brand new ministers that have just joined the Pentecostal Church of God at our last board meeting. Uh, Brother Keith Baggett is uh, with us tonight here from the local church. And also from the uh, Vietnamese, our uh, newest uh, uh, pastor and coming on board is uh, Brother Tran Lee uh, uh, yeah. he, here in Gilbert or Mesa area. And we welcome you and your group tonight and say, God bless you. Welcome aboard. God is so good. 
and we're excited to have you. You may be seated for a moment. Uh, I want Brother Zach Pepper to stay, well, he's already, uh, he, he's young, he can sit down, they said. Uh, I, I want uh, him to uh, greet you. Uh, can you come up real quick tonight, Brother Zach? He's going to be preaching for us Friday night. Um, matter of fact, Brother Tran Lee said he's going to be bringing some young people Friday night. And so we're excited and uh, believing God for a great youth rally here. Years ago, we used to have youth rally, women's ministry, uh, men's ministry. Uh, anyway, a lot of things going. And, and I believe we, uh, God wants to resurrect a powerful move of God in this generation. We need to raise up sons and daughters that need to hear the gospel. And I believe God is raising up mighty men of God to do that. We love you. Uh, Pastor Zach, greet the congregation if you would tonight. Hello, uh, my name is Zach Klepper. It's good to meet you guys. That walk up here was deceivingly long. <laughs> but um, I'm excited to see what God has in store for the youth. We had an amazing uh, summer camp. It was phenomenal. I mean, the last night, kids filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, like you said, you guys are dismissed, but... You know, if you want to sit here and just bask in the presence of the Lord, and they all sat. They all sat in the service and, and stayed there for a while. But I'm really excited. I have, a, I have a passion to see our youth get a real move of the Holy Spirit in their life. I uh, fairly recently, I've got like this new fire that's burning inside of me and this newfound, newfound confidence in Christ. And and it just, I believe that there's going to be a great revival that is going to start, and it's going to start in our youth. So many times we say they are, the, they, they are the church of tomorrow, but they're the church of today, and that we need to focus on them. And I have just this burning passion just to not only, um, not only just minister to the youth, but just bring the youth and the older generations together, like the word says, for for old men to rise up young men and, and older women to rise up young women in the church and, and show them what it's like to, to live for God, to show them what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a man of God, what it means to be a minister. And so that's my heart, you guys. So thank you guys very much. Looking forward to hearing him preach. Amen. Um, one other thing I'd like to do before I bring the word of the Lord tonight, um, Brother Leonard Grammer, would you come up tonight? And I uh, want to take a moment to honor Brother Leonard Grammer. I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but I told him I was bringing this pen. It's been some time that I've carried this pen at the last general board meeting that we went back. It gave me a 25-year ordination pen for Pastor Leonard Grammer. And... Uh, Many uh, that have received this um, understand that these wonderful years to serve the Lord is an honor and a great privilege. And we are honored to have a man of God like Brother Leonard Grammer that has been serving all of this time. I cannot tell you how hard and, and what sacrifice uh, he personally has given in the Lord's work. But if you go see his church and, and realize the building was uh, like many of our churches was... was uh, broken up and getting old. Come on. And it needed a lot of work. But they, he didn't let that stop him from doing what God wanted to do. God, God's brought the resources. God's blessed in a mighty way. And I want us to stand and give Pastor Leonard Grammer a hand of appreciation as I present to him the 25-year ordination. Pen. I love you, Brother Grammer. I know he doesn't want to, but he can say hello. Thank you, Brother Charles. It has been a, it has been a journey the last uh, almost six years now. Uh, one that you usually start when you're 30, Brother Odin. <laughs> you usually don't start the journey that I took when you're 60 years old. But God has blessed us, and we have totally transformed our piece of property from the curb all the way to the back fence. God has blessed us. The church is growing. This year has been a struggle. Uh, we were hit. Well, 13, 14 of our people were hit with the COVID this summer. Before they got to our church, we were able to close the doors. I lost six members this summer to death uh, that had passed on, and it's been a struggle. 
And uh, then, you know, I've had my own issues there that the devil's tried, but God is good. And, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for the days and years ahead. Amen. The Lord is good. I've asked the musician as they'll stay with me tonight as we deliver the word. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come before this congregation at our 2020 district convention. Father, the anointing of the Lord is so powerful tonight. And Lord, we just pray that you open every heart to hear. Lord, every, every mind to get ready for what God has in store for the word for us tonight. Lord, anoint these lips of clay, for we are nothing. And Lord, we can do nothing without you. But Lord, you are going to touch each one tonight as, they, as we receive the word of God. Let it go forth with power and anointing. And I simply ask that by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture in just a moment, but I, I, I don't want to forget to take time to say God has granted me with the most wonderful and beautiful wife. 51 years now celebrating there in August, and I, I'm so grateful for the woman of God that, uh, that she is and uh, the, uh, this opportunity to live another year and have a wonderful wife that backs me and supports me and prays for me. And I'm honored. I love you, baby. Thank you for uh, your support and your prayers for me. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the 1st through the 13th verses. Uh, quite a bit of scripture tonight I want to read to you. But I want to preach to you tonight on the high cost of anointing. The high cost of anointing. I found out a long time ago in starting uh, with... Uh, in ministry at a very young age, at about 16, that there are a lot of sacrifices that you're going to make if you're going to be an anointed man or woman of God. I found that in the Word of God, God prepares us for a life of giving, a life of sharing, a, 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 a life where we are pouring into others so that they might receive the power and the blessings and the anointing that God gives. I, before I left the house, I told Sister Faulkner when I got about 15 miles down the road, I forgot the anointing oil that I had. And I knew Sister Elliot has anointing oil. I, 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 I had got a bunch from Israel and I wanted to share that. But I want you to know tonight that God anoints people with a great purpose. I used to think that God only anointed ministers of the gospel. But I found that laymen, congregation, I, I found that deacons, I found that uh, businessmen and congressmen, come on, and come on, presidents or whoever, can receive the anointing of God. You can own a business and begin to pray God's anointing on your business. Come on, amen. I... I, I know that it's, uh, you know, kind of thought that, well, only men of God receive the anointing. But I want to tell you, God brought the anointing on children, come on, in the Bible, and raised them up to be a voice of God. And that's my prayer tonight. Lord, raise us up to be that voice of Almighty God. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. And now the Lord said to Samuel... How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him uh, from reigning over Israel? Fill your ho a horn with oil and go, for I am sending you to Jesse, uh, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. How many know God, will, uh, God raised up a king and will raise up those that he wants for his calling? And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. So first of all, uh, Samuel had to make sacrifice. You know, we live in a generation where much of the generation don't want to sacrifice anything. But thank God, God is raising up people who are willing to sacrifice for the Lord Jesus Christ. How can I go? Because if Saul hears it, he's going to kill me. Aren't you glad you don't have that persecution? Come on. Amen. I asked someone to be my amen corner, but I don't hear them yet. Come on. Amen. 
The Lord said, take a heifer with you and, I, and, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do. I, I, I like that part, Brother Edwards, because sometimes God gets you there and then He tells you what to do. Have you ever went without knowing? Come on. Ha, have you ever heard the voice of God and you started to go, but you didn't know where you were going or what you were doing? Come on. God was saying, when you get there, I'll be right on time. Come on. Just like the song uh, that they sang tonight. He, 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 you know, he won't be late. Come on. He's always right on time. Hallelujah. He said, I'll show you what to do and you shall anoint. Come on. For me, the one I named to you. And Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. They knew that God was sending somebody to shake the foundations uh, and to rock uh, their world. He was saying, I'm coming in the name uh, of a God uh, who can change it all. Can you say amen? So Samuel did what the Lord said. The elders trembled and coming and said, do you come peacefully? And he said, Peace, peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And so it was when they came that they looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. And the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the, his appearance for at his physical stature, because I have refused him. What a powerful scripture. When you feel like you're refused or forgotten. For, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. God knows who you are tonight. You may not be popular. You may not be the one that is the richest. You may not be the one uh, that has everything together. Matter of fact, your whole world may be falling apart. Uh, but God says, I know who you are. And I've anointed you uh, with purpose. Uh, I'm not looking at the outward appearance. I'm looking at your heart, son. I'm looking at your heart, mom. I'm looking at your heart, grandma. Uh, God said, I know who you are. You are a child of God. So Jesse called Abibadad and made him pass before Samuel and said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. So number one, uh, uh, he did not choose him. This is not the one. Jesse made Shammah pass by and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. When God raises up a prophet, Brother Jackson, he's going to know, come on, who's in the congregation and who it is that God's going to raise up. We better be careful who we, how we speak into the lives of our children. Come on. And our young people. Because God may raise up the unlikely one. The one that's not, that we feel is not deserving. Come on. God's looking for somebody that will say yes. Uh, here I am God. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen thee. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send me and bring me, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And so he sent and brought him in. And now he was ready with bright eyes. Come on, some said redheaded, I don't know. And good looking, come on. Turn around to your neighbor and say, you are good looking, come on. Everybody ought to say that to your neighbor. Come on. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is the one. God is raising up the right one today that will, uh, in the Pentecostal church of God, that will change uh, uh, this end time season of revival. I've been praying on my face before the Lord uh, that God would bring us a sustained revival and that God will begin to uh, let every church uh, experience that move of God uh, that we need for this generation. I, I, I'm praying. We, we have never seen a time in history where there is more violence, 
where there is more riots, come on, and the tearing down, like in Oregon and Washington and many of the states, where brothers are coming against brothers, uh, fathers against sons, uh, and our world is, is, is in a terrible place. But I'm here to tell you, God is a, a raising up and anointing the one uh, uh, that is with purpose. And the Bible said, and then Samuel took the horn of the oil, and he anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Can you imagine how the brothers felt? Brother Baggett is, they, they said, what's our younger brother doing da- uh, up here where I should be there, where he's at? I don't know what they felt, Brother Edwards, but I know this. When he began to pour the oil of anointing on the young man of God, something began to change in the hearts because God was raising up a man for the nations. God was raising up a man. And can I tell you, God's getting ready to raise up a church uh, in this last days uh, that will seek the face of God uh, and know that He has anointed us. Father, we thank You. Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day forward, and so Samuel rose and went to Ramah. I want to first of all tonight to talk to you about the fresh oil of anointing. Psalms 92.10 said, But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. Uh, I have been anointed with fresh oil. Something in my spirit during these last few months have uh, brought me to a fresh encounter with God. And I believe that a fresh encounter with God brings fresh anointing. I'm, I know that in my spirit, as we ask God, God, what do you have? And what are the dreams and visions that you have given for the Pentecostal Church of God? I want to tell you uh, that I believe in this last day we're going to see our churches filled again. Uh, they will begin to prosper greater than we've seen in many uh, uh, years and maybe even generations. My horn uh, is ex- uh, 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 you have exalted uh, and I have been anointed with fresh oil. Sometimes we get stagnant. Sometimes we get stale. Our whole world is crumbling around us and we don't feel that fresh anointing. I've got good news for you. The oil of anointing is given by God uh, on, a, on a basis wherein if we will get close to Him, uh, if we will exalt Him, uh, if we will begin to praise Him, something will begin to happen. I found that when the fresh anointing comes, God will provide and show Himself faithful. He will protect uh, when all of hell is raging uh, and being unleashed uh, and the enemy is targeting you. I'm sure there's nobody here that the enemy's targeted you tonight. Come on. No. All of us are the enemy's target. But I've got good news for the church, Brother Lopez. Uh, Even though the enemy may target us, uh, I I know the hand of God is resting on us. uh, And we are going to lift up a voice uh, and a standard uh, that will say, Listen to what the Lord uh, has said. uh, And look what the Lord hath done. uh, For He is mighty in the house of God. When I see Israel raising up to be a nation that is now hungering for God greater than, than they ever have. And I heard uh, last year that some a million young Jewish boys and girls uh, as teenagers uh, accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There is a hunger in the hearts of Jewish people to find the Messiah. And when the youth, uh, as, as our uh, brother Zach has already said, uh, when Jewish young people who are looking for a Messiah and their fathers and their grandfathers and their grandmothers uh, don't believe that it's Jesus, come on, they're still looking for Him. I've got good news. He is coming back uh, and He's going to reign and rule. Uh, and I'm thankful for the power and the anointing that raises up young, and, young men and women. God will provide and show Himself faithful. He will protect when all of hell is being unleashed and the enemy is targeting. He will promote you. I'm ready for God to promote some wonderful folks in the Pentecostal Church of God. Get ready tonight. Get ready to be promoted. You didn't know it was coming. Come on, Brother Gabe, it's about to come. Brother Michael Martin, it's about to come. That 
that area where I step in uh, to an anointing like I've never had before. And we begin to see uh, that all hell that is targeting your children will be, have to back away. Why? Because you walk under the anointing uh, and you begin to pull down the strongholds. You lay hands on your children. You plead the blood over them. Uh, and the mighty change of God begins to happen. Let it happen, Lord. And let it happen in us. Number one, I'm talking about the fresh oil. I was listening to Brother Jensen Franklin the last few months, many messages, and one of them, he talked about the anointing oil and that when Samuel took the horn and poured it over David, it was like six pints or quarts. It wasn't just, come on, it wasn't a bottle like this, but it was a, a, a large amount. No wonder, Sister Elliot, the Bible said that it, when they poured it over him, it ran down his head, ran down his beard, uh, run down into the robe. Most of us would be offended and go home. Come on. I'm wearing my brand new suit. Come on, my new clothes. But I don't want to get anointing stains on me. Brother Elliot reached over and whispered to me, you know, so there are those that go raised, raised uh, in an atmosphere like we see tonight in camp meeting. And revival atmosphere. And kids go home. Come on. With anointing oil stuck to their head. They may have went to school the next day and said, what is that on your head? It gives them an opportunity to say, I was touched uh, by the man of God. Uh, and he laid his hand on me. And I, I, I got healed. Uh, I, I got saved. Uh, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because someone took authority over my life. And said, I can change. I'm not walking the same that I used to walk. I'm not being the same that I used to be. I'm going to be that man of God that God is raising me up to be. Secondly, I want to preach to you about one of the steps to receiving the anointing is praising God's, uh, praising God before God's prophecy of anointing comes. Praise before God's prophecy of anointing. Praise ushers in the anointing. Psalms 89, 8 through 14 says, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you, and you rule the raging of the sea. When its, wa when its waves rise, you steal them, uh, and you have broken uh, Rahab in pieces as one who is slain. You have scattered your enemies uh, with your arm. Uh, the heavens are yours. Uh, the earth also is yours. What, what is the uh, psalmist beginning to do he's glorifying God and telling God who he is you are a mighty one you are the faithful one you rule the raging seas the waves are calm come on somebody you have broken Rahab in pieces you have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm that's the kind of God I serve he is not dead he is not asleep he is not slumbering he is mighty and knows exactly what we have need of tonight Psalmists begin to say the heavens are yours and the earth also is yours. The world and all of its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, come on, you have created them. Uh, Tabor and Herman rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, come on. You have a mighty arm, he said. Strong is your hand uh, and high is your right hand, come on. You think your left one's strong. God's, come on, God's right hand is mighty so he might do his work he never stops never sleeps never slumbers for you are the glory of their strength and in your favor our horn is exalted i like what the psalmist is saying if you are glorified and we give you and share about your strength god gives i like this favor and in your favor our horn is exalted God is pouring into us from the horn of oil. And He is giving us exactly what He has designed for a last day move and a work of God. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our King to the Holy One of Israel. Somebody say amen tonight. What I love about praise. Praise ushers in. The glory and the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I felt good when this 
music was playing and singing and worship before the Lord come forth. I heard one of the old time. I say old timers. We we uh, how many know we have an own time God. My brother tells folks when they say, I think you're an old time preacher. He said, no, I'm an own time preacher. Come on. I'm an own time preacher. Come on. I'm here to tell you tonight that when we praise and we uh, give honor to God, something's going to change. And the glory of God will touch you like you've never seen before. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Going to take a ready heart. I'm reminded of a, a, a pastor in Louisiana named Brother Gorman, Marvin Gorman. They were having a camp meeting at their church. And the place was packed. Thousands and thousands of people were there that night. A little Catholic lady came in and she couldn't find a seat in the back. So she made her way up the aisles and finally she saw there's a Seat open right in the front row next to where the staff and pastors come on are. She went in there and squeezed in. And when I heard him tell the story, he said this little Catholic lady in the service had her head bowed and she was praying, seeking the face of God for a move of God. They were having wonderful services. Pastor Gorman got up and began to preach. He said he was anointed like he hadn't felt in a long time. And all of a sudden he got right down off the stage in front of this little Catholic woman. And he said, it startled me because he said she was counting off her rosary beads. Come on. In a Pentecostal church. Come on. And he said, I, I didn't know what to say. It stopped me from preaching. And he said, what are you doing? She said, I'm counting my rosary beads and I'm praying and asking God for a miracle. And he said, well, we don't do that here in this church. And she said, she wasn't intimidated at all. She said, you pray the way you know how to pray, Pastor. And I'll pray the way that I know to pray. And we'll get our miracle that we need. Come on. That preacher didn't, that pastor did not know that she had come with one purpose. And that was to see her alcoholic son who had been uh, an alcoholic for 20 some years and she had been believing God a new Christian but I have faith now I, I have anointing in my life and I'm going to touch God uh, and she continued to pray that night and all of a sudden through the back doors come a man staggering down come on the back and all the way to the front and when she got a glimpse she said that's my baby come on God brought him there come on and saved him and set him free. You know, we may not pray the way some people think we should pray. But it doesn't matter as long as you get a hold of the horns of the altar. And you allow the anointing of God to, to break uh, that thing in your family's life that you need broken. Don't quit until the answer comes. Don't stop, uh, and, but get ready. Get ready for what God has uh, in a mighty way. I'm telling you tonight, uh, God's anointing comes uh, when we're obedient to the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, tonight, this, this prof God's prophecy of anointing that was on David is so powerful. And I, I, I want to read just a, a little more. Psalms 89, and when you spoke in a vision to your Holy One, and I said, I have given help to the one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him and with, uh, with whom my hand shall be established. Also, my arm shall be strengthened. The enemy shall not outwit him. I'm talking about God's prophecy of anointing on David. Listen to what the scripture says. God began to say the enemy may come against him, but he's not going to outwit him. Come on. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Come on. I will beat down his foes uh, before his face uh, and plague those who hate him. You know what? If you've got an enemy, you need to just begin to pray. Uh, God, let the anointing come on me. How many know you can love your enemy? You can love your neighbors. Come on. You can love those that, 
uh, despise you and hate you. And God can rain the blessings of heaven down upon them. I've wondered about this sometimes. We pastors, we have some people that don't like our church right across the street from where they're living. We get too loud. Come on. We get too crazy. You know, we're out canvassing and winning people to Jesus and they try to stop us. But I've got good news for you, Pastor. Never, never give up. Uh, God has a plan and a purpose for you. uh, And His faithfulness endureth forever. Come on. He said, I will beat down the foes before His face and plague them with uh, those who hate Him. I don't want no plague on my life. Come on. Come on, somebody. Say amen. But my, verse 24, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with Him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. Come on, somebody. That got a hold of me, Brother Spencer. Why? Because I know that when uh, I'm having trouble, the Lord gets out his horn of oil again. uh, And he begins to anoint me, Brother Max Oden. uh, He pours the anointing of oil upon me in my life. Uh, Now, how many know it doesn't always have to be literal oil? It's the oil of the Holy Spirit, uh, the person of the Holy Ghost, uh, that God is uh, allowing one more time to minister to us. He said, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. I love the faithfulness and mercy of God. Somebody say amen. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. Also I will set his hand over the sea and his right hand over the rivers and he shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and my rock of my salvation. Pastor Edwards, it hit you tonight. I have saw you anointed, but when... Brother Edwards began to talk about his father who he never had uh, and began to give glory and honor to the Heavenly Father. Something uh, touched you and anointed you tonight uh, that, that, that let me know God has a word for this body. And if we'll listen to what God is saying, uh, we'll leave here different than what we came. Uh, I don't know what you come for, but I come to tell you God loves you and He will protect you. Uh, He is our Father. He is our God. He's the rock of my salvation. Amen. Also will I make Him my firstborn and the highest of the kings of the earth. Come on, folks. He's our King of kings. And my mercy will I keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand firm with him. I'm preaching tonight uh, about the covenant. uh, uh, Excuse me. About the anointing of the Lord. The high cost of anointing. When God makes a covenant with you, uh, get ready. And when he made it with David, he stands firm uh, with his covenant. Brother Grammer, when we went to... Jerusalem, we went to the city of David. My heart was so challenged because I knew that God raised up a mighty man by the name of David. And Israel loves, come on, King David. Come on, they took us on a tour, told us all about King David. Maybe us preachers should be the ones next that are so filled with the Holy Ghost that we get a job in the city of Jerusalem. But we're not talking about the city of David. We're talking about the city of Jesus uh, and His soon return. Come on. I'm telling you tonight, uh, we must be the voice of God. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell it in my soul, but my soul feels the anointing and the touch of God. My covenant will stand firm with you. Turn around to somebody and say, I want a covenant with God. Because a covenant will not be broken. Come on, Brother Baggett. Come on, the covenant will not be broken. You may fail many times on your side of the bargain with the covenant. Come on. We're sinners, but we're saved by grace. And I'm glad for the anointing that changes the atmosphere in my relationship with God. Come on. Next, I want to talk to you about David's anointing for breakthrough in Chronicles. 14 verses 8 through 12. And now when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. Come on, church. And David heard of it and went out against them. What kind of man that when he hears that the enemies are searching for him and they're already on the way, that he'll get up out of bed. Come on, put his armor on. And he begins to go toward them. 
It's not a coward, but it takes a mighty man of God who will, that knows that God already took down the bear or the lion. Uh, come on. And God uh, got him ready. Can you say amen? David, David heard of it and went out against them. And when the Philistines went and made a raid on the valley of Rephim, David and David inquired, come on, of God saying, when you start inquiring and asking God about what can I do? What can I do when I don't know what to do? What am I going to say when I don't know what to say, Sister Vanderveer? I know, and where, where, you know, where do I go? What do I say? I can tell you, every time God will come through. Can you say amen? David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. And so they went up to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Therefore they call the name of the place Baal Perazim. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a breakthrough in the Pentecostal Church of God. In, my, in every church uh, in the Arizona district, uh, we've been fasting and praying uh, and believing God uh, that we'll see a mighty, mighty move of God. We need that in this last day. We need that in this last day. Thank you, Lord. Verse 12 said, and when they left their gods there, David commanded, uh, gave a commandment, and they were burned with fire. All the enemies that will come against you, the gods that will come against you, are nothing in the presence and in the anointing of God. David said, you might as well just leave them there because they ain't no good. Come on. We're going to burn them up. Come on. And I think that's what God is saying to us in this generation. For the Joe Phillips. God is saying to us, we got to get rid of those gods. How many times have we allowed little things to become our God, our job, our career? Come on, our family. Well, I'd go, but my husband won't go. Come on. Come on, my wife won't come. Come on. You have to have a made up mind. You have to have a spirit that raises up in you that says, I will not be defeated. I will not allow anything to rule and reign in my life except the God, Jehovah God. And He is reigning and ruling in our lives. He is the one that we need to begin to glorify. Burn up every other God that might be in your life. Get rid of those things that stop you and hinder you in the work of God. I'm not trying to preach a me negative message. Uh, I'm preaching one of power and anointing uh, that God will treat you the same uh, as He did King David. Uh, he will raise you up to be a voice mighty in your community and do what God wants you to do. Are you ready? When God raised David up as a king, I remember when I went to pastor in Riverbank, California, I had asked God, God, I, I want you to do things that you've never done under our pastorate. And God, give me divine connection with people so we can reach our city for God. We started with the little things. I, I got with uh, one of our police officers who attended our church with the Lauren Offalter. And he presented a program where we could begin to take uh, Christmas gifts to the homeless and those who were in their little trailers, we'd find 12 children, you know, in f big families that were living in a little old dirty mobile home and not very big. They had pallets all over the place. And I remember going and we had one lady in our, our city as we began to pray. I said, God, we need a miracle. God sent a lady who gave us $1,200 for that project that, that Christmas. And, and hundreds of kids with all the other offerings that begin to come in, God began to give us favor with, with the police department because they joined with us in that program. And then it was along several of the councilmen when we would go pray at the city meetings, begin to come to our church. And it wasn't long until Mr. White, the mayor, said, I don't know what's going on down, on down at that little Pentecostal church. But I want to go and find out. And he came and he began to come and, uh, to our church. 
One of the councilmen began to fly us all over the area so we could carry the gospel of the Lord. I'm telling you, folks, uh, when God anoints you uh, and you make up your mind, I'm not... I, I'm not going to just sit here in my four walls uh, and, and be content uh, with reaching, uh, you know, doing the work of God. I will get out of my community and I'll be, I'll, I'll be anointed of God to carry on the mighty work of God. Burn down the gods and begin to find out uh, that God has multi uh, uh, and great works for you to do in the kingdom work of God. Fourthly, I want to preach to you about God's anointing. On a man by the name of Gideon. I love the scriptures. One of my favorite. I found that God doesn't always raise up people. In moments of popularity. I found that. But, but God does many times raise. People up in moments of poverty and brokenness. Outcasts people and those who seem too young. And those that seem too old. Look at outcast Moses who stuttered and the slave called Joseph, the prophet named Gideon. Listen to what the Bible said in Judges, the sixth chapter. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. And that pertained unto Joash the Abizarite and his son Gideon threshed wheat at the wine press or by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, uh, thou mighty man of valor. Come on. You know what's coming. Come on. The Lord is with you, thy mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. I once knew the power of God. Our fathers and our grandfathers told us how good it was and all of the revivals and miracles and everything that happened. But what happened? what's happened, I don't see it. We've been robbed. Come on. How many have been robbed of an experience with God? I'm here to tell you tonight. God looked down on the prophet and said, You're a mighty man of valor. And he said, God, I don't even know where the miracles are today. I don't know what's going on. Something's gone wrong. But listen to what the Bible said. Hallelujah. Let me get back to where I was at. I can find it. Praise the Lord. The enemy does like to rob us, don't he? Come on. And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked on him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel. Come on. From the hand of the Midianites have not I sent thee? I love it when God sends an angel of the Lord uh, and the Lord looks upon us and says, go. And you know what he said? He said, go in your might. Or, or did he say that? No, no, come on, come on. Yeah, go in thy might. Why? Because he's got to get you moving first. Come on. You may not feel like you have much might. You may not feel like you have much power. You may not feel like many of us who feel unworthy. Over the years, I've fought that so much, and, and especially in the young years of preaching. I didn't feel like I, I was worthy to preach or even call to preach. And I'd have to fall on my face before God and say, God, did you really call me? I know I, know I had an evangelistic dad who loved the Lord, uh, but God, did you call me? But when I had that encounter with God again and again and again, I, I knew the anointing was up on my life, and I had to stand strong and go forth in the power of His might. When I read to you about God's anointing on Gideon, he paid the price while he was hiding. Now, I'm sure folks laughed at him when he was hiding by the wine press. But listen to what the Lord went on to say. And he said unto him, O my Lord, or he said, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am least in my father's house. Little do we know that. When God is setting us up for a divine connection, 
It may look like failure to us. But God sees a great future. And God anointed Gideon. And he rose up to be, Sister Elliot, not only the voice of God, but the man of God that changed his world. Why? Because he went and knew that God will not forsake me. He will be with me. The anointing may come out of the crushing and the breaking and the brokenness of your life. Get ready even when you're hurting. Even when you're down and weary. We've come through one of the hardest times. When I got the COVID-19 way back months and months ago, I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. My breathing was labored. 103 temperature for four or five days. I fought with that. But I again come to God and said, God, you remember when I had the eight-way bypass surgery and you saved me with purpose and said uh, that I still have something for you to do. So I made another, another covenant with God and said, God, I will do my best to not only be the leader in the Pentecostal Church of God as the bishop, but I'll, I'll step into every door that you open for me uh, and, and I will do the best that I can uh, to carry this gospel in this last generation. I'm surprised sometimes when God opens the door. Gideon was surprised that God called him a mighty man of valor. But mighty men of valor comes out of brokenness and paying a price. And Gideon was that kind of man. My own father who ministered until his 49th birthday and he passed away was an anointed man of God. I love my father. I remember when just a young boy, dad began to fast. Sometimes dad would fast three or four days, sometimes 10 days. And I'll never forget when he fasted 30 days. And after he had fasted 30 days, now I'm not talking about a Daniel fast. Come on. Or I'll eat what I want to fast. Come on. Or I'll eat fast. Come on. <laughs> but I'm talking about a sacrifice. Say, God, it's going to cost me something, but I'm going to pay a price to fast and pray. They went to a little fellowship meeting in Eloy, California. And after fasting 40, uh, 40 days and nights, he, he come in the service late, and I've told this story at Sister Elliot's church. So if you're here, you may, you'll hear it again tonight. But he walked in a little late that night, and he was scheduled to preach. And when he got up, he said he felt the anointing of the Lord and prophecy began to come forth and they get, there was some interpretation. And he said the Lord laid on his spirit to say, I believe that if there were a blind man here tonight, God could heal you. A blind man uh, for 24 years stood up and said, Preacher, do you believe God can heal me? He said, come on up here. Come on. By faith. When you've been fasting 30 days uh, and you receive the anointing of God upon your life, some of the cost of uh, some of the cost of seeing miracles like those blind eyes being opened. And that happened that night. He, they took a watch and he saw it for the first time. Come on. In 24 years. Come on. But I'm here to tell you, it may cost you something like you've never known before uh, to pay the price for the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, may, it comes by prayer and fasting. Some of these things only come by prayer and fasting, the Bible said. So I want you to know that when God anoints you, get ready to make the sacrifice and have your breakthrough so the anointing may come out of the breaking and the crushing. Number five, God's anointing on Israel in Genesis 15. And he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that, they, that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs. And, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation, speaking of Israel, whom they shall serve, will I judge. And afterwards, they shall come out with a great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. And thou shalt be buried in a good old age. The oil is a picture of, 
of Israel's blessings. And after 400 years of isolation from God, Israel, the Bible said, came out with great substance. The anointing will bring out of you God's best. And when the anointing is on your life, God's great substance will bring the best out of you. What is in you that God has placed there, God wants to bring out and reveal. And He wants to raise you up to be that voice of God. I can hear the enemy speaking in somebody's ear and say, you're not worthy to be anointed. You're not worthy to be called tonight. Uh, but I come with a purpose tonight to say that every man, woman, boy, and girl in this church tonight can have the anointing of God upon your life. Uh, and you may be the difference maker in your church. It may be one of your teenagers, pastors. It may be you. Come on, but it may be someone you least likely think that is going to have it. Isaiah 43, 3 talked about the crushing and the saturation and the fullness, the overload. Come on. The area of moistening of the oil, the infiltration and, and the dispersion of, of the anointing. And the process of the anointing oil is simply this. And I'm not going to take long on this and I'm going to wind up, but the process of the anointing oil was much that he said, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying in Exodus 30, Take thou also the three principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of casea, 500 shekels, and after the shekel of the sanctuary, and all olive uh, and hen, and thou shalt make it a holy ointment, an ointment compound after art the uh, after the art of the apothecary, it shall be the holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table of all the vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, the altar of the burnt offering with all of his vessels, and the laver and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them uh, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel saying, This shall be a holy anointing unto me throughout your generations. I'm going to stop there and say, I believe that the holy anointing of God uh, must uh, pass down throughout our generation as well. Uh, in, in the process of anointing, God said, I, I want you to uh, come to the sanctuary, anoint the vessels, uh, uh, anoint the laver and his foot. Come on, everything that it touches shall be holy. Can I tell you, God is a holy God. I'm going to skip down if I may to the purpose of the anointing. In Isaiah 61, I close with this scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good things to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Come on. And to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance to our God and comfort those all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion and to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy, joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And they may be called the trees of, right, uh, called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord that He may be glorified. Can you say amen? God is the one who anoints, who prepares His leader for service. But what is the purpose of the anointing? God anoints leaders so that He might enable us to speak supernatural words uh, and perform the supernatural works that He has called us to do. Uh, we need to consider the purposes. Uh, uh, this scripture said uh, that we, He will enable men and women to perform their ministries. He will bring hope and good news to the afflicted. We will, uh, God will bring healing to the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, to set prisoners free, to proclaim the uh, acceptable year of the Lord, to comfort those who are mourning, and to furnish beauty for those who have lost it, to provide happiness and a glad heart 
an opportunity for men to praise God. In closing, I'm reminded of how the anointing changes us and changes churches. There was a pastor by the name of J.B. J.C. Hibbert who pastored right out of Dallas or in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. My brother had opportunity to meet with Brother J.C. Hibbert when he was running about five or 6,000 people. He said, Pastor Hibbert, what, what is the one thing that you would tell me that caused the success of your great church. He said, let me tell you what it was, Pastor. He said, we've had all the big names come in. A.A. A. Allen, come on. Shambach. We've had all the prophets of God come and they preached. The crowds came and the crowds went. Come on. When the crowds would come, that big auditorium would be filled up but when they left, there was only, at that time, he said, after, after they had moved into the big building, two or three hundred people, which some of us would be glad for that two hundred. Come on. Three hundred people. But he said, I wanted to really tell you what happened. He said, one day I was at my house praying. And he said, I heard a knock at the door, and I went to the door, and there was a little man that came to the door and said, he told me, he said, God sent me to preach for you Wednesday night. He said, what did you say? He said, do you know we just had A.A. A. Allen here and they didn't make no change. Come on, nothing happened. And he thought, well, I'll, 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 just, I'll, I'll just cut him off and, and not have him preach. But he said, about the time I started to shut the door, the Holy Spirit said, just let him preach Wednesday night. So he preached. He said, that man got up, Brother Odin, with an with a old guitar and strummed and he said when he strummed it was out of tune and the two little girls that he had his wife had died and the two little girls he said they they couldn't sing very well but about three quarters of the way through the song he said the anointing touched them and they began to harmonize and something changed and he said that man began to preach and it was not in-depth message that i would have thought he said it it was, but he said something happened at the end of his message while he was preaching. He said the anointing hit him and he made an altar call. And a man that we had been praying for, for in our church, uh, in the community, that was there that night for the first time, 30 some years we've been praying for that man. He came and got saved that night. And he said, Woo, thank you, Jesus. You, you helped us and, and we got away from this service and he didn't me really mess us up too much. The man came to him after the service that night and said, the Lord told me to come back tomorrow night and preach for you. And he said, we don't even have service tomorrow night. Come on. And he said, all of a sudden, he started to tell him no. And he said, the Holy Spirit said, okay. So he announced to the people, we're going to come back tomorrow night and have service. He said, they came and he got up. Got that guitar out, strummed it again. It was still wasn't tuned right. Said so you thought at least he would have tuned it up. Said so they began to sing and they were out of tune, but all of a sudden the anointing began to fall. That night, four men that they had been praying for for many years came and got saved. He said he came again that night, and the next service there were thirty saved. And he said, that went on for six weeks. And he said, preacher, I want to tell you, in that six weeks, he said there were, that, that there were over 600 people that got saved. And he said, that was the foundation for the 5,000, the 6,000. He said, God sent businessmen. God sent wealthy men and women who could establish the church. But God brought men and women who made up their mind. We are not going to stop growing until God touches our lives. And they became a team that changed their city for God. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to bring what we need in this last generation. Stand to your feet with me if you will. 
I'm going to ask our board to come if they will. Our board members come please and join with me standing here in the front. I didn't get to tell them all, but I, I, I want you to come and face the congregation if you want to kind of stand right here, if you will. As I was praying this morning, the Lord woke me up. I, I read Daniel 10 two times over for about an hour. I went back over and over and deciphered, God, what are you saying to us? And the Lord said, I want you to, de to declare a 10-day a fast. Now, I've not done this since I pastored, but I mean, since I was a pastor, but as a bishop, when God speaks to me, I'm going to I'm going to tell you what God told me. He said, if you begin to proclaim a 10 day fast as many as can. And you pray about what kind of fast you can do. I know some people have health issues. You, you can only fast certain things. But I, I, I want to tell you this. If we will get a hold of the horns of the altar and I'm asking on the 24th of this month, if we can begin a 10-day fast, and that will take us to November 3rd, which is when we vote for our president. I don't know why God woke me up this morning, but I knew in my spirit, God is saying, if we can get one church and two churches and 10 churches, come on, and maybe the whole 20-some, 30 churches that are in, our, uh, in the Arizona district, if we can get them fasting and praying for a, for a radical spiritual change in America. I'm going to tell you folks, we've got to pray. Because all of hell is coming against our president and our vice president. A vice president who loves God. I have never heard any other president speak more about God than our current president. I'm not here to tell you how to vote. But I'm here to tell you, let's get a hold of God. And let's begin to seek the face of God. And let's vote Bible. Let's vote Bible, Bible values. Uh, let's begin to pray that God will bring revival in our church. Uh, and yes, give God some glory. Give God some glory. We're going to start out tonight. And Pastor Roy, if you can help me, if you'll take the anointing oil. And I'd like you to go to each, each of our presbyters here tonight and our youth leader. Now I'm going to ask all of our pastors to come and I want you to stand in front of them. Come on, pastor. Like I say, I don't know what you come for, but I come with expectation that our pastors are going to leave here. And can you face the uh, pastors, if you can face the presbyters here, come just line up across here if you will. Thank you. Thank you. And then our two ministers... Brother Lee and Brother Baggett, if you'll come. Sister Elliot, come. Lord, don't let us leave here until we've touched you. Oh, God, don't let us leave here until we've touched you tonight, oh God. May your anointing flow in this house tonight. We will not leave like we came in Jesus' name, uh, but we will leave with a, a purpose and a desire like we've never had before to reach a dying generation. Oh, Holy Ghost, do a mighty work in this house tonight as we begin to pray. Lord, I'm asking our presbyters to step forward, lay hands, come on these and pray with me. Father, I thank you for Sister Elliot, our pastor here. She's, she's been a faithful servant all these years. I plead the blood over her. One more time, may you give strength and the anointing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, I pray for Brother Spencer that every everything that needs to be done in Benson, God, that you'll bring the finance, that you'll bring the resources, that you'll bring the anointing of God. One more time, raise him up to be that voice that you want him to be. 
Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We honor you. Brother Carmen, come and join me if you will. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Father, the anointing of the Lord. Break the yoke tonight in the name of Jesus. Anoint our pastor for in the morning. Anoint our pastor, Lord. Oh, what a man of God. Father, I thank you now for what you're doing in this house. Father, I pray for Pastor Michael Bart. Oh, God, raise up a congregation in his community. God, I believe there's going to be a takeover in Buckeye, Arizona. God, you're going to begin to send folks like we never dreamed. A new building, a new place, a, a new sanctuary. Let it happen, oh God. Father, we pray for Brother Trent Lee, Brother Levi. Oh, God, anoint him, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Gay. Now, Lord, minister to him in a powerful way. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the man of God you're raising up. Do your mighty work. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your hand of your mighty hand of anointing. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Do your work. Do your work. Do your work. Do your work, oh God. Do your work, Lord, in our ministries tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want each one in the congregation, the rest of you that are here, and I know we're social distanced. If you don't feel comfortable with taking someone by the hand, you don't have to. But if you do, I want you to reach over, take someone by the hand, and I want to pray for you. Brother Carmen, would you come? I, I, I want Brother Carmen to, as my bishop, to pray over me. I honor this man of God. Sister Carmen, thank you for coming. I want them to come and let's get the oil and I want to I don't know what God has ahead but when Pastor Carmen passed down the torch when they passed down the hand of anointing on me I felt like God was raising this up and I don't want I, 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 I want to obey be obedient and I, I, I want I, I want to see fulfilled everything that God said that he would fulfill one of those dreams tonight is already coming. There's a scripture in Psalms that says, Ask of me and I will send you the nations. Our last board meeting we met with Pastor Tran Lee. And God began to send this man from Vietnamese. For years he was in hiding just to carry the gospel. He had to hide and study. He could not study openly. He could not preach openly. But God said, I'm going to begin to send the nations to the Pentecostal Church of God. We needed diversity, folks. Uh, we, we need a multi-ethnic churches that if we're going to reach Phoenix, Arizona, Tucson, Flagstaff, every major city here in Arizona, it's going to take God sending the nations to us. And I've been asking God, and God's doing that. He already he promised it, and now it's happening. 
It's one, but it is one because it's a brand new start. It excites me, Sister Mayo, that God is working mightily, and I want to be a part of that. And all of you that want to be a part of it, I want you to join hands with someone. And I'm asking my bishop to lay his hands on me and that God will lead me and direct me in the way that God wants to lead me. Father, as we come and as we lay our hands upon our bishop, we pray the special anointing, O oh God, to rest upon him. Let him be the leader you called him to be. Let him be a David. Let him be a Gideon. Let him be a man of God. Let the blessings of God continually flow through his life, Lord. Give him wisdom and knowledge and understanding, oh God, of all that you have, Lord. Impart it into his life, oh God. Let him be an instrument in your hand, oh God. To do the great work that you've called him to do. Move in a special way, Lord, we pray. And give him that special anointing. That special anointing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him praise and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown. Someday, we'll Hallelujah. Pastor, Pastor Tran Lee. Pastor Tran Lee, can you come up a moment? Do, is there an interpreter here that could interpret for Pastor Tran Lee tonight? Give God another hand clap of appreciation. Pastor Tran Lee by his church is called Pastor Levi. Each pastor, they give a biblical name. And when I heard Pastor Levi and got to talk with him at our board, I felt a special anointing on his life. And he's been through some struggles. I know. I felt in my spirit. But I know this. And you can let him know that as well. But I know that God has a, a, a great a great future. Many of his team came tonight and on Friday night they'll be bringing some youth. But I feel like a great revival is about to, I want to speak a word into, I believe a great revival is about to come to the Vietnamese people here in Phoenix. I believe that the separate, there will be some separation in that you will have to separate yourself from a few things and begin to fall on your face to receive the anointing. And the touch of God one more time. I believe you're hungry for that, Pastor. And my prayer is, God, that you open the doors like he's never seen before. God, they're renting a building right now. But you're going to open a door. So, Lord, to bring the finances that they need. And, and raise up a mighty church of young people. Young sons and daughters that will prophesy. And will speak in tongues. Uh, they will see healings and miracles in their church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you're faithful. And now, Lord, we send him forth to do a mighty work in Jesus' name. Amen. I want him just to greet. rất là vui mừng khích lệ và được hân hạnh đến uh, là một phần ở trong uh, I'm very happy to be part of the uh, the Pentecostal church. Yeah. Uh, uh, tôi tin rằng những cái lời tôi rằng những lời tiên tri mà Chúa bày tỏ qua tôi tới của Chúa sẽ được uh, ứng nghiệm và đó là điều mà Chúa đã đặt để trong lòng của tôi rất là nhiều. I believe the Prophesy from the pastor tell me today tonight it will come true because that's what has been in in uh, boiling inside of me. <laughs> 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 
hội thánh của chúng tôi là hội thánh Việt Mỹ Revival Church cho nên chúng tôi tin rằng sẽ có một cái gương phấn hưng trong cộng đồng Việt Nam ở tại Phoenix ở tại Arizona. Our church is Vietnamese Revival Church so I believe that will be revival in our community. Và sự phấn hưng sẽ đến ở trên Arizona này. And the revival will come in to Arizona. Chúng ta nghe được nghe được cái tiếng mưa lớn sắp đến. We going to hear the big raining come for. Giống như là Eli được nghe được tiếng mưa lớn để nói với vua Ahab thì chúng ta có thể nghe được tiếng mưa lớn sẽ đến cho vùng đất Arizona này. Yeah, we will hear the big rain come into Arizona. Yeah. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Not only is God going to raise up Vietnamese, Japanese, Thai churches in the city that we were in in Sacramento, God began to raise up uh, several Thai churches. And in that area, some 200,000 Pentecostal Russians moved to that area. And God changed the atmosphere of Sacramento, California. God, you can do that one more time here in Phoenix, Arizona, in Tucson, Arizona, Flagstaff, Arizona. To God be the glory for great things he is about to do. Will God bless you in the morning? Uh, Brother Malone was scheduled to uh, preach and he called me the other day and, and was not going to be able to come. So I asked Brother Max Oden. He will be uh, preaching our memorial service in the morning. Thank you, Pastor uh, Max Oden. A mighty man of God. He loves the word and one of the most powerful men of the word that I know. Uh, I, I, he's going to, uh, he said God had already laid a message in his heart. And he will be giving honor to four of our pastors who have gone to be with the Lord. Brother Joel Price, Brother Tom Price, uh, Brother Pyle, and uh, uh, Brother Austin Antone. And so we want you to come and give honor to the Lord as we give tribute and honor to our pastors who have gone on to be with the Lord. We love you, appreciate you, thank you for the love offering. And uh, then at 2 o'clock, we'll come back and begin our business And what we don't finish, if we don't finish all of our business on uh, two, at two o'clock, then we'll come back at 10 o'clock and two o'clock on Friday for our business. And then uh, Friday night is our rally, and we're going to have a great time, Lord. Sister Elliot, you have a. Yes, amen. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Come on early. I'll be around 8 o'clock to be kept back there, of course, when service is in here. I'll all be kept back there. <laughs> May not be stopped, but the movie's just as good as. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Sister Ellie. Let's give our uh, local church, Victory Tabernacle, and our pastor a wonderful hand of appreciation. We love you, Sister Elliot. You're a blessing, an honor. I'm going to ask tonight... Uh, Brother Zach, could you dismiss us in a word of prayer tonight and then consider yourself dismissed? In the back, don't forget to pick up. Um, we have some little lapel pins for Christians United for Israel with the Israeli flag and the American flag. We'll give them out as long as they last. First come, first serve. Also, uh, Christians United for Israel pins. And please take a covenant card. Join with us uh, as we pray for the nation of Israel. God bless you. Uh, Brother Zach, God bless you.